us who have seen various kind of problems that we may face while you are trying to execute the transactions in a concurrent phase right so if you are going to execute the transactions in a concurrent manner or if you are executing the transactions in an interleaved manner there might be existing various kind of problems those problems we can call it as basically as conflicts conflicts of concurrent executions right so those can be in any manner if you are going to perform write read operation or read write operation or write write operation there is a chance of getting certain kind of conflicts right means if i am going to have transaction t1 and transaction t2 are the two transactions are there if one person is trying to perform write operation and this person is trying to perform read operation then there exists chance of getting ambiguity between their results right so this is what we can simply call it as a kind of a conflict right so not only about these three we have also seen two more kind of problems are there what are those one is something like if database administrator can delete some kind of a schema some kind of a schema this kind of thing can able to produce certain kind of errors right so those things we can technically call it as unstable cursor problems this is one kind of a problem what we have seen and another thing is incorrect summary problem right so incorrect summary problem right? so these are the five problems that we have seen right so if you are able to solve these five problems what we can do we can go with the concept of scheduling right scheduling means basically we can we can simply define the order in which your transaction need to be executed your transaction need to be executed if you are going to define the order of execution of the operations by ourselves then definitely there is no problems for us right so that's the reason we are trying to move for the concept of schedules so here we have seen two kind of schedules one is serial schedule so obviously serial schedules are going to maintain our database always in a consistent manner because there are no interleaving of under, uh, interleaving operations of the transactions then there, there won't be any kind of problem for us but coming to the another kind of uh, serial schedules we can call it as non serial schedule here the order of execution of the operations are going to be interleaved so we cannot guarantee that your uh, database is in consistent mode that's the reason we can we can uh, define it in two ways one is uh, serializability another one is non serializability right so the reason why we have taken again these two classifications is based on the characteristics of the operations of the transactions simply so the point here serialization defines which will clearly define whether a non serial schedule yes dash and a serial schedule yes are equivalent or not if they are equivalent i can say that simply they are serializability right that serializability can be defined in three ways once again right so we can define it in terms of their final result or we can define in terms of their conflicts or we can define in terms of basically p right so we can say that serializable schedule s yes, and non serializable schedule s yes, s are equivalent i can say that definitely they are serializable but in what way they are serializable means based on the result of the final operation or based on their conflict operations or based on the views right so i think we have seen what is the meaning of result serializability so result serializability means whatever the result that is produced by the non serializable schedule s dash and whatever the result that is produced by serial schedule s if these both results are equivalent i can say that they are result serializable okay now now in today's class we'll see further that is conflict serializability right basically guys what kind of conflicts we may occur right so we may occur various kind of conflicts one is write read conflict read write conflict and write write conflict these are the three kind of conflicts may occur right based on these conflicts only your final results may vary right so your final results may be in consistent mode or final results may be in inconsistent mode also that's the reason what they are trying to say na if you would like to say 
anything has a complex serial ability if i take the serial schedule if i write like ss mean serial schedule if i call it as yes and non serial ability schedule yes dash to be conflict serializability to be conflict serializability then whatever the order the conflicts are occurring whatever the order the conflicts are occurring in both yes and s dash should be same mean that the number of conflicts that are occurring in s dash as well as in s both are same then i can say that both are in conflict serializable right so can i say that then serializable schedule and the non serializable schedule both are same or not yes so for example if you take uh, let me take the transaction t1 and a transaction t2 for example here i am trying to write one non serial schedule if i take read one of a write one of a read two of a write two of a read one of b write one of b read two of b write two of b so this is a kind of non serial schedule yes guys so i am going to call right for the same thing if i would like to write a serial schedule yes serial schedule yes first they has to be equivalent first right as i am assuming that they are equivalent i am going to write one serial schedule for this t1 and t2 t2 read one of a write one of a read one of b write one of b read two of a write two of a read two of b write two of b right so this is a serial schedule and s dash is a non serial schedule now to define these two schedules are conflict equivalent or not what you have to check you have to check for the order of conflicts in s dash right the same conflicts are going to be occurred in s also then i can say that both are conflict equal directly so now try to write what what might be the various kind of conflicts occurred in either s or s dash you can take any one right i am going to take s dash and i am going to check whether they are occurring in s or not right first where, where might be the conflicts occurring is r1 of a to r2 of a is going to be conflict no they are on same data item but they are of type read read operation there is no conflict what about this one r1 of a to write two of a is it a conflict no conflict it is going to be conflict read write operation on the same data item so it is going to be conflict similarly write one of a and read two of a is it going to be conflict yes so write one of a and read two of a is it going to be conflict what about another one write one of a followed by write two of a it's going to be conflict right similarly read one of a followed by read two of b any conflict no read one of a followed by write two of b no no conflict because they are on the different data items right this is a and this is b so like this you have to check one by one everything means first you have to take one particular operation read one of a then you have to check with all the remaining things all the remaining thing right next i have taken write one of a then you have to take all the remaining things. so as write one of a is going to make occur conflicts between r2 of a and write two of a i have written these two and is there any conflict between r2 of b and write two of b no both are of different data type this is a and these two are b there is no problem so like this you have to write the remaining things also what about the fourth kind of conflict check with this side also you should not skip anything r2 of a with r1 of b no right a and b here next similarly write two of a followed by b there is no conflicts here right so similarly you have to go with everything if i go with like r1 of b to r2 of b any conflict no r1 of b to write two of b conflict is there r1 of b to write two of b similarly write one of b to r2 of b similarly write one of b to write two of b so like this if i are going to clearly observe here total six kind of conflicts are going to be occur 
right config means they has to be occurred write read read write 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 on the same data item if they are on different data item there is no meaning of config also right so these are the six kind of uh, configs are occurred in sbs now you have to observe you have to observe whether the conflicts in s also occurred the same kind of conflicts occurred in sr check we have to check right so try to check whether read one of a to write of a is happened read one of a to write of a is it occurred yes so means it has occurred in s also similarly write one of a to read two of a is it occurred write one of a to read two of a yes it is occurred similarly read one of b to read two sorry read write one of a to write two of a write one of a to write two of a it has occurred so like this you have to check so if you are going to clearly check you are going to get these six conflicts again in s also right so if you want you can just directly write by simply viewing here you can write directly here and at the final conflicts you have to check with the final conflicts of s yes any manner you can check right so if you are going to write here read one of a to write two of a it is happened similarly write one of a to read two of a write one of a to read two of a similarly write one of a to write two of a this has done right next read one of b to write two of b if you are able to observe read one of b to write two of b similarly write one of b to read two of b write one of b to write two of b so write one of b to read two of b write one of b to write two of b right so finally if you are able to observe here you are going to have six kind of uh, conflicts those same six kind of conflicts are going to be occurred in non serial schedule also then i can say that this is conflict serial schedule okay now means the number of conflicts occurred in s dash should be equivalent to the number of conflicts occurred in s in such a way that both should have the same characteristics again right so if you should not think about the count you have to think about the kind of conflicts occurred right whether r1 to r2 r1 to write one or r1 to write two like that you have to check. okay so basically so trying to solve this particular procedure is a kind of difficult one am i right or not so every time trying to check this particular uh, procedure is going to be a lengthy process so for that what we can do na you can you can go for simply drawing a dependency graph drawing a dependency graph if your graph is going to have any kind of a loops any kind of a loops then i can say that it is definitely not conflict serialized as part of the academics just go with only up to definition part but if you want to go for some kind of comp examination you have to learn this depth one right you have to know this shortcuts right if in the given graph any kind of loops observed then definitely is going to be not complex reliability and if there are no loops and i can say that it is a kind of conflict serialization right conflict serialization right so how can you draw the graph how can you draw the dependency graph so for example if i take transaction t1 transaction t2 and transaction t3 and they are going to have various kind of operations read of x for example for t3 read of x is there here it is for write of x read of x and write of x this is a kind of one non serializable schedule yes guys Yes, yes. Now we have to check whether it is complex solubility or not, right? So to check whether it is complex solubility or not, what you have, what you require basically, you have to write one kind of serial schedule again, right? So do you clearly get an idea in which order you have to execute these things? Even if you are going to write like T one, T two, T three order, there is less chances that this order is going to be equivalent to this order. So instead of this, what we can do, na? It's better to find whether it is conflict solubility or not. If it is conflict solubility, definitely it is going to have serial schedule. See, what does the serial solubility meaning? Serial solubility meaning is whether non-serial schedule and serial schedule equivalent or not. If I say that 
in non serial schedule is some serializability can i definitely going to write one serial schedule or not yes that's what i am trying to convey here so if they have given some kind of uh, non serial schedule if i are going to define that whether it is going to be one kind of serializability definitely you can write one kind of serial schedule for this so here try to take the, uh, take the notes as uh, transactions t1 t2 and t3 and what are the various kind of uh, conflicts occurred here conflicts might be t1 to t3 is any conflict no t1 to t2 r of x no t1 to t2 w of x yes right so means the conflict is from t1 to t2 of w of x right so means i can say that i can directly write like this what are the meaning of this one there is a conflict from transaction t1 to t2 t1 to t2 right similarly try to write like r of x to w of x is it a conflict yes t3 to t1 means i can directly draw the directed graph like this right so t3 to t1 there is a conflict right similarly t3 to r of x no problem t3 to right of x is it a conflict or not t3 to t2 i have to draw the graph okay fine next similarly right of x followed by right of x again it is going to be a conflict right right of x followed by right of x so t1 to t2 already there no need to write again next right of x to right of x t1 to t2 it is already there as all the operations are done we can stop the graph here so this graph i can call it as dependency graph only now in this final graph we have to check loops are there is loops are there no loops are there so then i can say that this is conflict serializability conflict serializability as i am saying that it is conflict serializability can i able to write its equivalent serial schedule i can able to write its equivalent serial schedule right how can you write the equivalent serial schedule right so if i are able to clearly understood clearly understood this is a kind of a graph which will define the topological sort of so what is the meaning of topological sort which will clearly define the order in which your nodes are going to be executed right so here t2 is going to be depend on t1 and t3 right t2 is depend on both t1 and t3 this rmr clearly defines right if you take the t1 t1 is depend on t3 right so i cannot be able to start with t1 directly but if you take the t3 t3 is not depend on any things so i can directly take t3 as the first transaction then i'll go with t1 then i'll go with t this is the order in which if you are able to execute the transactions then it is equivalent to this given non serial schedule so t2 t3 t1 and t2 this one i can call it as topological sort okay now, now this uh, this is the correct respect to serial schedule okay now. so basically what we can do now simply when they have given some kind of uh, non serial schedule try to draw the dependency graph for it if the graph contains the loops you can directly say that it is non conflict variable if there are no loops i can say that it is conflict variable that's it right if they specifically ask what is the equivalent serial schedule then you have to construct the Uh, sequence also so how can you check the sequence by simply identifying which one is independent to which or right if it is freely independent then i can take that as a first one right as t3 is independent completely from all the remaining things i can return as first one then you have to remove like this for example try to solve this one Read one of x. Read two of x. Write one of x. Read three of x. Write two of x. Define it is conflict serializable or not. So I hope you know the meaning of this one, right? read one of x means read operation is a kind of a operation belongs to transaction t1 
right if i say that r3 of x read operation is a kind of an operation belongs to transaction t3 so total how many transactions are there here three transactions are there right so simply you can write like this t1 t2 and t3 right so take out the first one which is belongs to transaction t1 i am going to write r of x right r2 of x is going to be comes under t2 of x right one of x is going to be comes under right one of x r3 of x will be comes under t3 right 2 of x will be comes under t right this is the corresponding structure you have to draw right so no need to write this also once you have the enough idea of uh, how it is working right you can basically write in such a way that they are should be belongs to the different transactions once we draw this structure try to construct the dependency graph for it right so dependency graph will be uh, the things like you have to identify various kind of conflicts right so read one of x if i am going to start read of x no problem this read of x no problem but if you take the write of x there will be conflict right so read of x to write of x there might be the conflict so if i take here t1 t2 and t3 so definitely there will be a conflict between t1 and t2 t1 and t2 right next take out this read of x read of x to this w of x so t2 to t1 there will be one kind of a conflict right so i can stop here itself i can stop here itself as this graph contains a kind of a loop right once we identify the loop then i can say that it is not conflict eligible right so here i can observe certain kind of loop so if you want you can complete the entire process at the end anyway you can define as as it contains a loop i can say it is not complex eligible this is a simple process to define right right as i am saying it is not complex eligible can i able to write any kind of serial schedule for this one no i cannot able to write any kind of serial schedule with respect to this particular structure so take out one more example r2 of x write 2 of x R three of x, R one of x, right one of x. Define the given transactions are complex eligible or not. so basically here how many transactions are there three transactions the maximum number you can consider here out of all operations so like t1 t2 and t3 are the transactions so r2 of x means it will be comes under t2 w2 of x means it will be comes under t2 r3 of x will be comes under t3 r1 of x will be comes under t1 and then w1 of x means it will be comes under t1 Right. So this is what they have given in a single line. Right. Now, what we can do now to define it is a complex syllable or not? You can go with the direct diagram directly. Right. So T one, T two, T three. What might be the conflict occurred here? Tell me. Take out the first one, read of x, which are linked. Is read of read of T two should be interleaved with T three? No. Right, T2 is any conflict with T1? Read of x no. But if you take read of x to W of x, then it is going to be a conflict. So there will be a line between T2 to T1. T2 to T1. Okay, fine. Next, take out the W of x. W of x to again read of x. There will be conflict. Anyway, it is already there. W of x to W of x. Anyway, there is a conflict written already. W of x to Read of x, t two to t three, t two t three. There is a conflict. What about the another one, t three to t one? This also one kind of a conflict. Read of x to write of x. So t three to t one is a kind of one more kind of a arrow mark, right? Flow, right? If 
if I say, so I think all are completed, right? So as all are completed and it doesn't having any kind of loops, loops, then I can say that it is conflict serializability. As I said, it is conflict serializability. I can able to write its equivalent serial setting. It's equal serial set, right? So it's equal serial set is what T two. Once we write the T two, remove the things so that we can able to get the idea which are dependent, which are independent, right? If I am going to remove this one, then T three is free, but T one is dependent on T three. So we can write like T three, then followed by T one. Right? This is the respect to sequence serial order, so that this results will be equivalent to again the complete serial, again the given non serial set test. So next kind of uh, serializability is view serializability. Right. So we have seen the two other serializabilities. One is in terms of conflicts. Another one is in terms of their results. Right. The another one is view serializability. So if I say that two schedules. One is serial schedule, another one is non-serial schedule. Like if I say one is non-serial schedule S dash, and another one is serial schedule S, to define them as view serializability, it has to satisfy three important points. Important points. What are those means? First, if I am assuming that T I is the transaction, T I is the transaction which is reading data item Y. Which is reading the data item A first. That to be in yes. Right. What is the meaning of the sentence? Sentence. T I is reading data item A on serial schedule yes. Right. Then. Then the same thing has to be happen in non serial schedule also. What is the meaning of this one? The same T I has to read the same data item A in non serial schedule also this is the minimum criteria that has to be satisfied to become a v serial library right similarly if if ti is performing final write operation not the intermediate oper write operations if ti is performing final write operation on the data item a in yes then in non serial schedule also the same transaction has to perform Final write operation on A that is on yes dash. Then I can say that it may be the V serializability, right? And the third point is if T I is reading T I is reading certain value, certain value which is written by T J, which is written by T J in yes transaction T I. Is reading a certain value which is written by T J in S, yes. then the same thing has to be happen in non serial schedule also. Meaning that T A has to read which is written by T J only, not should be written by some other transaction. Then those are a part of V serial schedule, right? If the given non serial schedule is going to be satisfy these three conditions, then definitely I can call it as V U serializable. Basic definition. Okay, so means so if you, if you want to have the clarity, so I will give an example so that we can get clear idea. For example, if I say T one and T two are the two transactions performing various kind of operations, like this: read of A, A equal to A into ten, write of A. Read of B, B equal to B minus five. Write of B. Similarly, read of A, A equal to A into one point one. Write of A, read of B, B equal to B plus five. Write of B. So this is a kind of serial schedule, right? I can call it as yes, right? 
Similarly, I am going to write one non-serial schedule, S dash for the same thing, T1 followed by T2, T2, right? So, how it will be now? Read of A, A equal to A plus 10, write of A, read of A, A equal to A into 1.1, 1 .1, write of A, read of B, B equal to B minus 5, write of B, Right of this is a kind of non serial schedule. Finally, we have to define whether they are view serializable or not. Right? If I would like to say they are view serializable, it has to satisfy the three conditions. The first condition is the first condition is if transaction TI means here, what are the data items are there here? A and B are the two data items, right? A is one data item, B is one data item. Based on those data items, only we are performing various kind of other operations. So, here transaction T1 is performing the read operation, right? If T1 is performing the read operation, in non serial schedule also T1 has to be performing the read operation, right? Is it happening or not? Yes, right? So, as it is performing the read operation on A, here also it is performing the read operation on A, then I can say that this particular point is satisfied for A data type. What about the B data type? T1 is performing the read operation, here also the same thing, T1 is also performing the read operation, then I can say that. First point is satisfied. Okay now. What about the second point? If I say that write up final write operation is done by whom? Final write operation is done by T2 on A. In non serial schedule also, final write operation is going to be done by T2 only. Similarly, final write operation done for B done by T2. Here also final write operation done by T2 only. So I can say that second point is also valid. What about the third one? So, third one is clearly defining that if TI is reading certain data which is produced by some TI, some TJ, what are the meaning of this one? You have to identify certain kind of write read conflicts. Meaning is right. So, TJ is performing write operation and TI is performing read operation. So, write read conflicts you have to enter, right? So, as T2 is reading, T2 is reading A value which is written by T1. So, this is what a kind of write read conflict. Is the same operation is happening in non serial schedule also you have to check, right? If you are going to check here, T2 is uh, reading the data item A, which is produced by T1. So, okay, there is no problem. Similarly, write read conflicts, any, any are there? Here it is there. Right? The same thing is going to be happen here also. That's it. So it is not write write. It should you have to identify always only write read conflicts. So it should be compulsory this one. Right? So as it is going to have the same kind of conflicts are occurring in the order. Then I can say that third point is also satisfied. As all the three points are satisfied, I can say that it is view serializable. Right? So, if you want to have the more clarity, you can just take out this example. Right? So, S1 is one kind of a serial schedule, which was asked in the earlier gate question number. This one, one serial schedule. S2 is also one kind of a serial schedule. S3 is one kind of a non serial schedule. They are asking for whether S1 is equal, view serializable to S3 or not. The corner you can check. S1 is visible to S3 or S2 is visible to S3 or none of these are correct. Right? So check out this. What you can do for this? Can we check the, the first option? S1 and S3. What, what is the first point to check whether they are visible or not? We have to check with the read operation of the transaction, right? Who is first reading the data item A? See, if you want the clarity, I will try to write in different manner. Take out the two data items A and B. So you can, you can write this manner so that you can get clarity. Two data items A and B, and you are trying to check for S1 and S3. 
S1 and S3, right? So take out. So this is for first point. And for the second point, again write S2, S3. Similarly for third point also, write S2 and S3. Right? So take out the first point. For S1, S3, you have to check. Who is reading the first A? T1. T1 is reading the first A, right? In S1. What about in S3? Who is reading the first A? T2. Right? Here itself we can say that as these are not equal, I can say that S1 and S2 are not visible. As first point is itself is not satisfied. So now for this, what we can do now? You can go with S1 and S, S2 and S3. I am trying to check now S2 and S3. S1 and S3, right? Now try to identify who is reading the first value of A? T2. Very good. Who is reading the first value of A in S3? T2. That is the meaning of this one. Who is reading the first value of B in S2? T2. Who is reading the first value of B in S3? T2. Right? What about the second point? Who has written the final right operation? Final right operation is done by S2 in A. T1. T1. What about in S3? T1 only. Right? What about B? T1. T1 only. What about so the next one is also T1. I hope I understood. Right? Next, third point. Third point is what? If I am trying to read certain data item which are written by someone, the same has to be done in other transaction also. If I are able to observe, if I are able to observe, I am trying to read the data item A which was written by transaction T2. Transaction T2. Is it the same operation is done here or not? You have to check, right? As I am trying to read, which has to get from the T2 only, not from any other transaction. So, it is happening. So, for S2 level and S3 level, both are same. What about under B level? I think here also same. Hmm? Okay. Fine, right? So, this should be R of B. So, this should be R of B, right? So, as all the points are satisfied, I can say that S2 is equivalent to S3. Equal to S3. Again, the point here is, it's a kind of hectic task, right? It's a kind of hectic task. So, that's the reason we can able to move for a kind of dependency graph once again. A dependency graph, right? So, before going for dependency graph for the visualizability also, we can make one, one important point here. If I say that a non-serial schedule, non-serial schedule, S dash is conflict serializable. This is important. Number. I won't give proof for this, but make it remember. If I say that a non-serial schedule is conflict serializable, definitely, definitely it is going to be VS serializable. Definitely it is going to be VS serializable. You can blindly answer this one, right? But if I say that it is not conflict serializable, it is not conflict serializable, I cannot guarantee that whether it is V serializable or not V serializable. You cannot able to guarantee definitely. Right? So when you got any kind of a question such that define whether it is V serializable or, or not, what you can do? You can go with the conflict serializable, right? I hope you have the simple logic for this, right? What you can do? You can simply draw the graph for it. If it contains a loops, you can say that it is not conflict serializable. If there are no loops, I can say that it is conflict serializable, right? Based on that, we can able to define whether it is V serializable or not. Okay, now. But what about the case for if it is not conflict serializable, what we can do? If it is not conflict serializable, we have to again go with the manual process earlier what we did, right? So instead of that, instead of that, again, you can just go with the, some kind of operation called blind right operation. Blind right operation. If in the given set of transactions, if you are able to observe any kind of blind right operations, blind right operations, then we cannot able to define again whether it is visual level or not. But if you are able to observe, there are no blind right operations, definitely it is not going to be a view serializable. 
see this much depth is not required for you but if if you learn it is it is better for them that's it right so if i if i if you are unable to identify any kind of blind rights then i can say that it is not visually intelligible right even if you are unable to identify any kind of blind rights if there are any kind of blind rights are there then what you can do is again you can go with some kind of dependency graph some kind of dependency graph right what you are going to follow here na first and foremost important point is you have to identify you have to identify who is who is reading the first data item e who is reading the first data item e and who is updating who is updating first data item e who is first updating the data item e so then you have to draw the uh, relationship between those two right so for example first data item a read by t1 and first updating the a value by assume that t3 then you can able to draw the graph like this this is what the first step you have to do and the second step is second step is you have to identify all kind of updates you have to identify all kind of updates then you have to draw the graph for it for example t2 and t3 are the non updated operations but finally t1 is updating the final operation so the second point is here who is doing final update on it who is doing final update on it then you can able to draw the graph for like this t2 t3 this going to be uh, depend on t1 this is the second step and third step is you have to identify as like here here what you are trying to check write read complex right similarly you have to check for various kind of write read complex various kind of write read complex right if there is any kind of write read complex try to draw the graph for this also right at the end after drawing all these three steps if i are able to identify loops i can say that again it is not view serializable as like as this one only it is not visible if i if, if i are unable to identify any kind of a loop then i can say it is visible right so how it is working all these things you no need required so it's a kind of just shortcut process right? so we can go with simple example so that we can get clarity for example if i take the transaction t1 t2 and t3 are the transactions transactions and i am trying to have a read of x so instead i am going to take read of a read of a write of a and write of a so you need to define whether this given non serial schedule is a kind of view serial schedule or not is serializable schedule or not so for this what is the first step we can do first and simple procedure is you can find out whether it is conflict serializable or not right so conflict serializable means you can draw the graph if i draw the graph t1 t2 and t3 tell me t1 to t2 is there any conflict no t1 to t3 very good there is a conflict similarly t2 to t3 also conflict is there is it correct similarly t2 to t1 is also kind of a conflict very good and any other things t3 to t1 t3 to t1 very good right so if you are able to observe here i think all are completed right so as you observed here loops then i can say it is not conflict serialized which means that i cannot guarantee that it is v serialized so first shortcut option is eliminated what about second option have you observed any kind of blind rule have you observed any kind of blind rights so what are the meaning of blind rights first blind rights means blindly i am updating the value in my transactions i am not thinking about any kind of read operations all those things i am simply updating its values right so is there any kind of transaction doing like this t3 if i have to observe the t3 t3 is not going to have any kind of uh, read operations instead it is blindly writing its value that's why i can call this as 
a blind right blind right right so as i am able to observe the blind right again i cannot guarantee that it is b serializable or not right you can able to observe if there are no blind right objects i can say that not v serializable but here there are blind rights are there then what you have to do you have to go with the again further process of these three steps right so you can just first identify who is first performing the read operation on me first step is what who is performing the first right read operation of a t1 so basically at the end you need to have a graph right t1 t2 t3 right first read operation is a done by t1 and who is first write operation on a t3 so you can able to draw the graph like this t1 to t3 next second step is who is performing final write operation on a t1 right so for this you have to draw the loop like this so done by t1 so i have to draw the complete graphs like this so from all the remaining nodes you have to draw the then the third statement is you have to identify various kind of write read sequences write it what are the write read sequences are there is there any write read sequences are there in this example read read is there read write is there read write 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 is there but there is no write read sequence right so we can just simply skip the third step right so this is the graph we got right in this graph we have the loops have the loop so i can say that it is not view serializable it is not view serializable okay now so this is a step this is the particular process you have to follow hope you got the clarity right so there is no shortcut for this you have to compulsory remember this process try to draw the last one if i am going to have transaction t1 transaction t2 and transaction t3 and in transaction t1 i am trying to perform read operation on e write operation on e read operation on e write operation on e and right operation on e you have to define whether it is view serializability or not we still have that right so the first and foremost point is we have to check for whether it is conflict serializable or not, right conflict serializable or not means you have to draw the graph t1 t2 and t3 right so what might be the conflicts occurred here T1 to T2 definitely conflict is there, and T1 to T3 conflict might be occur, and T2 to T1 conflict is there, T2 to T3 conflict is there, this conflict is there, and conflict is there, and this conflict is also there. Right? Many kind of conflicts may be occur. Right? So if you are able to draw like this, so definitely T1 to T2 conflict is there. T two T T one is conflict is there, right? T two to T one conflict is also there. As you can able to observe directly loops, directly observing the loops, I can say that it is not conflict serializable. So when it is not conflict serializable, I cannot guarantee it is V serializable. So we can go with the next step. Next step is what? Have you observed any kind of blind rights? Yes. So at T three level, you are going to have blind rights. you are going to have blind rights so we cannot guarantee that again it is not serializable again so we can go with again the third third process you have to go with next level t1 t2 t3 with three steps what are those three steps who has read the first item of a t1 who has updated the first a t2 so t1 to t2 there is a graph there is a graph that is first step and coming to second step coming to second step who has written the final write operation who has written the final write operation t3 so from the remaining things you have to update that 
things as like this. So T3 is the final one. So from T1 and T2, you have to draw the edges like this, direct edges. Then the third step is, have you observed any kind of right read conflicts? Yes or no? What are those? Right read can be from T2 to T3. If you are able to observe, from T2 to T3, right is there. Anyway, you got the edge as T2 to T3. Right? That's it. Three steps are done. Is there any loops are there here now? No loops. Then I can say that it is VU serializable. VU serializable, right? As it is VU serializability, I can definitely guarantee that I can able to write its equivalent serial schedule. What is its equivalent serial schedule? What is the equivalent serial schedule? So, so you can able to understand that this is a kind of a uh, topological sorting, right? So, which is independent one here? T2. T2 is the independent one. If I am going to remove the T2, these edges are not. Oh, full active, you are all. Huh? Okay. So, T1 is completely independent. If T1 is completely independent, I can able to remove these edges, right? If I remove these edges, which one is the dependent, which one is the independent? T2 is independent. T2 is independent. So, I can write the next one is T2. If I remove this also, you will left out with T3, right? So, this is the serial transaction, this is the serial schedule, which is equivalent to this Naran serial schedule, right? So, I can say that this is a kind of view serializable, right? If they specifically ask, what is the topological sort for the given non-serial schedule means, you have to define like this. Okay. So, we can stop here.